Hey you! Yeah you! Have you ever played Armored Core 6 and thought to yourself Yeah, this is nice and all, but I wish I could just go a little faster? You make the funkiest looking mech just to reach 385 boost speed. Actually, we could even remove back back. Oh, 40 yo, let's go. And yeah, I mean, this thing can be kind of fast, but it's not for answered levels of fast. Where you cover half a mile with every quick boost and you have the energy to do it constantly. And look, I'm not the biggest for answer fan out there, alright? But one cannot deny that the sheer speed of that game is gonna make you feel stuff in your privates. Now, AC6 doesn't have the same open spaces that Forenser does, and that's a good thing. We don't want maps looking like this. When it comes to speed though, I can maintain over 500 kilometers an hour easily, and like, my energy ain't going anywhere, bro. It's beautiful. Now, I can't promise you we're gonna be doing that here, but I got the next best thing. Armored Core for next movement regulation. And their main goal is to recreate AC4's regulation 1.6-ish combat flow. Now, I never played AC4, only for answer, but I'm going to assume that it's the same thing, except maybe like 30% slower. Some of the base changes include increasing quick boost velocity, by 500% and reducing quick boost reload by 50. Ascending energy cost is halved, normal boost and ascending velocity increased, assault boost velocity also increased. They also decrease the time it takes for energy to start recharging and to imitate Gen 4 combat they increase the velocity of projectiles. Now, let me just show you this in action and then we'll talk a bit more about the other changes. Anyway, if you want to install this for yourself, what you want to do is manage, go to browse local files, open up your Armored Core game folder, search up the regulation bin, let's change the name for like vanilla regulation, and then on the next mod zip folder, all you need is the regulation, all right? Everything else, it's just there in case you want to change something yourself. After that, you might want to unplug your internet cable because this might get you banned online. I don't say I didn't warn you. And just by installing the mod, this Mac went from 407 boost speed the 468. It's not an insane difference, but it is faster. And also, this quick boost, I mean, look at the distance of this thing. God damn. Actually, I don't know. I mean, just look at the speed of this thing. Holy shit. This is actually, this is pretty fast. This is nice. By the way, enemy ACs are also modified because they use the same parts the player does. And this dude was never really that hard. But you can definitely tell there's a difference in speed. Like, everything just feels faster. Actually, in a city map like this, where you have buildings and you can really tell, like, how fast you're going, like, this... This is fast, bro. <laughs> like, honestly. Yo. Also, due to some of the booster changes, which include having the reload speed cut down by 50%, which makes already fast boosters even faster. That's a 0.18 reload speed. This one has a 0.15 reload time, and yeah, I mean, but every booster in general is just a lot faster to reload now, which means you can now do stuff like this. <laughs> which looks very funny. As you can tell, you don't have to change direction in this game because that's just not how AC6 works. In the fourth generation, for you to chain a boost, you'll have to change direction, but that is not necessary here. And again, th this is part of the we can only change values right now type of thing. Although I'm not even sure if he's going to make it so you need to change direction because you still have AC6 energy, which means that if you use this a lot, you just run out of energy, you know? So like, you don't have fourth generation energy. So I don't think it would be really necessary to even change that. Although if possible, I think it would be cool to do that just to get like a closer experience, you know, and maybe also like reduce quick boost the end consumption or something. That would be crazy. And like I said before, enemy ACs also get the benefits from this mod because they use the same parts you do. Now that 468 boost speed was pretty nice, but let me actually try to make a decent build for once. 
Still a pretty lightweight build, 370 on the boost speed, I guess it's not bad. And now we're gonna have to go fight Rusty on the arena because he's in Xylem. Which looks freaking sick, but also he's a pretty lightweight build. I mean, well, he doesn't have a lot of health though, but yeah, he's pretty fast. Come on, bro, this boost speed though, I mean quick boost speed. Oh, assault armor, what is this, fourth gen? <laughs> well, yes, anyway, he... Ah, come on. Bro, the increased speed is so nice. Come on. Come on, machine guns reload. Use some of this. Maybe hit him with this. Yeah, alright. Yeah, I mean, Rust is a pretty lightweight build. What about this guy? This guy gave me some trouble, actually. He's also pretty dodgy and zoomy, which is good. That's exactly what we want right now. But the AI... Oh, doesn't fully use the mod quite as well as a player does because their AI just isn't really ready for this type of stuff although you can tell some stuff like the increased boost speed and stuff like that which is nice and overall like the entire combat flow is just a lot faster this guy is still wrecking my shit bro come on no 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 yo what you got them weave Ugh! Bitch! Nah, I'm coming back from this, bro! I am coming! Nah, I, I'm not. As a short-range weapon enthusiast, I will say that it actually feels harder to use short-range weapons like this because of the just the increase in speed. Like, you definitely feel like you should be a little further away from the opponent. And this, like, the short-range weapon really just feels kind of crazy like this. He, come on. Use a machine gun. Bro, I can't even hit him with a machine gun. And the projectile speed is increased, but this guy's just all over the place. Hit him with this. And... Oh, let's go! And speaking of ranges, so the linear rifles now act like sniper rifles from Classic Armored Core. Gonna have to test that. Laser rifles also now act like laser rifles from Classic Armored Core, which I guess he means they're trash. I'm joking, but there were a lot of optional parts you needed in order to make energy weapons work on Classic Armored Core. Also, they're separated to laser rifles and high laser rifles. KRSV has been upgraded to Karasawa MK2. The laser cannons currently fire their charged projectiles even without charging and he also severely reduced the amount of times you'll see a weapon ricocheting by making the effective range the same thing as the ideal range which pretty much also just means more range for every weapon which is great but anyway this is a sniper rifle now also I'm gonna need yes yeah, something like this. By the way, speaking of ranges, look at this machine gun do work at 350 meters. <laughs> God damn. And I mean, this might work well against an MT, but because of the new like boost speeds and whatnot, there is zero chance you're hitting an AC at that distance. And speaking of distance, let me see how far this lock-on actually goes. Bro, where am I? Alright, 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 alright. So, come on, hit that thing, that's 650, oh my god, bro, this just straight up fires a charged shot, yep, yes it does, alright, I see what they mean, god damn, that is nice, <laughs> bro, that is nice, bro, <laughs> yo, boy. god damn, I gotta hit these things from the back, uh, is there any more MTs around here that I can shoot? Oh, wait, that one on the bridge, hold up, hold up, come on, get that lock on, boom, oh my god, this indeed feels like a proper sniper, and I like it, oh. <laughs> yo, that's so nice, I feel like the fire rate for this thing has been reduced, because, I mean, it is a lot more powerful now, I do appreciate the changes in ranges, because it makes so much of a difference, and because of the sheer speed of the ACs, like, this still feels balanced, and I mean, MTs can suck a dick either way. Like, they were never meant to be strong opponents. They're just, they're just there to make you feel good about yourself. But like, this is just, this just makes the weapons feel a lot nicer, man. And again, enemy ACs also have these changes applied to them. And they will shoot you without charging anything. And, but like, because their AI isn't ready to work like that, these changes aren't quite as apparent 
for them. Also, I believe the Kurosawa has undergone some changes. Let's go maximum energy firearm specialization with this one. And I trust this thing is gonna be shooting charged shots. Yeah, it is. Actually, by the way, the other AC also has the Kurosawa, doesn't it? It does. Bro, it this for Oh my god, the damage on this thing. Yo, I'm getting shreked over here. Bro, oh. Yeah, this is not easy to hit. I might need a different FCS or something. So the Kurosawa, even though it's an energy rifle, it doesn't build up heat anymore. It just has normal ammo and then reloads. Yeah, like classic armored core. Anyway, enough playing around with this girl. Let's go. Yeah, hit him with this. Oh, let's go. Yeah! So these rifles aren't chargeable anymore, but they are just more powerful per shot because... I mean, you're already shooting them charged. FCSs have been reworked. The white lock-on now goes from 450 to 700 meters. And the red lock-on range, which apparently were all the same in vanilla, now it's based off of your FCSs long-range assist capability. The internal combustion generator's weight has been reduced by a thousand. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you mean by that. But, oh, it's, uh, I see, it's the, it's all the yellow flame generators. Arm bazookas are now capable of being fired while moving, which is nice. And like I've said before, enemy accuracy and enemy AC AI need some work, but they're configured by a LUA script, and so he can't do anything about that right now. And then there's also the Nabashima mode. But first things first, let me just test out these arm bazookas real quick. Is it only the bazookas, or are detonating bazookas also arm I, I'll... I'll guess I'll try one of each. Alright, so let's get moving and now that definitely still stopped me. But alright, so the detonating bazooka doesn't work. Only the bazooka bazooka works. This one, yeah, I definitely stopped the fire that one. I'm not sure if that's intended to be like that or not, but either way, it is what it is. This, though, feels pretty good. I mean, their reload time is really slow, goddamn. But they do pack a punch. Alright, good stuff. Actually, could the dual bazooka now replace the Zimmerman on the meta? Yo! <laughs> nah, I mean, this, this, it's a lot slower. And a lot easier to miss as well. Hold up, the Xuan G has a pretty decent reload time. Hold up. I mean, I say decent for a bazooka, that is. But it still staggers on two shots. So, I mean... I hold up, hey, that's kinda nice. But anyway, you're probably wondering what the hell is a Nabashima mode 0.1. It is an optional file very much on its early days where it increases every non-AC enemy AP. It also increases their projectile speed and their attack damage, again, for non-AC enemies. And that modification is right here under optional files, let's get it. Nabashima mode or not, you install the mod in exactly the same way. I could have tested this before installing the mod but it pretty much just means you're gonna have to put some more rounds into stuff before they die although <laughs> I mean with a shotgun doesn't really seem to make a difference got them that also might be because of the effective range increase though is that making the shotguns OP Maybe. I mean more OP. The shotguns are goddamn beautiful in this game. Actually, I might just let Sula kill me here. And I'll change to the machine guns because I already have an idea of how they perform in this mod. Ludlow and another Ludlow. By the way, what's my FCS right now? It's... Uh, uh, sure, whatever. Although this dude is an AC, so he's not getting affected by Nabashima mode. But he's a pretty nice fight because he's getting affected by everything else. And it's just like, bro, the AC fights are just a lot more exciting now. Like, they're just faster, man. Oh, let's go. Also, the effective range is increased. And Sula isn't that fast. Palteus, though, is a non-AC enemy. So he does get affected by Nabashima mode. How much, though? Well, not enough to not get his ass beat. That's how he fought. Bro, nah, this dude's still getting Shrek, bro. Eat this! Oh, beautiful. This dude is so easy now, like, what the hell? Oh, shit! Alright, good. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm good. I'm good. Go over the fire sword. Bro, I could not dodge that fire sword. 
the first time I fought this guy. And now it's like, oh, you just have to go over it. Like, what the fuck is the big deal? <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't that, that obvious to me in the first run. I, I don't know. I mean, like, sure, we have the OST tunings and whatnot. But I think, like, just knowing what to expect from bosses and, like, overall just knowing the game... Like, it, it really helps a lot it, with the difficulty. So yeah, honestly, I would say Nabashima mode is probably the way to go if you want to install this mod, because it really doesn't make that much of a difference. But it's nice, it's gonna make the fights last a little bit longer, and that's cool. Or not, if you're just really into that power fantasy style stuff, but hey, that's why it's an optional file. But you wanna know something else that's really cool? Merch from my store, link in the description, guys, check it out. It really helps a lot, and who knows? you might find something you like. Also, the mod author is thinking of ways to make Nabashima mode harder, so if you wanna go over there and drop a recommendation, you can do that, or just leave it in the comments. Personally, I think this is fine. It does make it harder to get through an entire mission, and also, you don't want enemies to just become bullet sponges. The biggest thing in terms of difficulty would really be just the enemy AI, but I, you can't do anything about that right now, so, you know, hopefully in the future. Something that I think could be pretty Pretty nice though, maybe not right now, but sometime down the road, and not only for Nabashima mode, but just for the mod in general, is telling these supply drones to go suck a dick and actually just give the weapons more ammo in general, so you can get through an entire mission without resupplying. But again, right now I don't think it's possible to just delete the supply drones from the map, but it would be nice for the future. Anyway, the mod is also getting consistently updated, which means that now you actually can fire the detonating bazookas while moving. There were a lot of changes when it comes to missiles as well, and the hovering speed of quads has been slightly increased by 25%. In 1.4, they also increased the initial velocity of the assault boost by 290%, and then it slows down to normal assault boost levels. And because of those changes, they also increased the initial cost by 280% and then the continuous assault boosting was reduced by 20%. Also EN output while in the air has been increased by around 400% and this melee weapon homing honestly I have no idea what they mean to be fair <laughs> like it, this this still just feels like AC6 I I don't know but anyway this is the AC4 next movement regulation and guys hope you liked it I'll leave a link in the description for the mod if you want to try it for yourselves and peace